So in the 1980s, the film market was flooded with larger-than-life action heroes like Stallone, Schwarzenegger, and of course Chuck Norris. However, in 1988, Bruce Willis would get his name in the Hall of Action Heroes with the movie Die Hard. Now basically, Die Hard doesn't tread new courses when it comes to story. It's basically the same 80s action movie you've seen a million times before. The basic rundown being a man put in extreme circumstances must overcome a villain or a bad guy to save a girl. However, what Die Hard does differently is that it makes the story a personal learning experience for the protagonist, giving way to a major theme for the story, masculinity and weakness. You could argue that as John McClane drones on foiling Hans Gruber's plans, tension is building both physically and emotionally up until the emotional release that McClane has in the bathroom scene towards the end of the second act. Tell her that, um, that she is the best thing that ever happened to a bum like me. She's heard me saying I love you a thousand times. She never heard me say I'm sorry. However, in Die Hard, acting only tells part of the story. The other half comes from editing. For example, the way that the editors cross-cut back and forth to different characters to give different points of view. Examples of cross-cutting being the way it cuts to Holly, Powell, or Hans to give their points of view on the situation. A clever example of this would be that Hans and John never really see each other physically until they run into each other nearing the end of the second act, as they've only really used radio communication to communicate the entire movie. This gives way to quite possibly the most tense scene in the film as John is face to face with the enemy and doesn't even realize it. In terms of mise-en-scene, Die Hard makes great use of the glass tower that the whole story is set in. The film utilizes naturally appearing hard light to give the realistic feeling of the experiences that these characters are going through, all the while evoking the dramatic feeling that the film really needs. Additionally, props prove effective as symbols furthering the plot and contributing to the Nissan Sen. Examples of this would be John's handgun as a Chenkov's gun, foretelling the action-packed events to come, or John's tank top as a visual indicator of John's emotional baggage that he's carrying throughout the film. When it comes down to it, Die Hard does exactly what it's supposed to do. It takes the viewer on an action-packed adventure while providing relatable characters that the everyday person can relate to. In the end, it makes for a really satisfying action movie, as well as a potential emotional roller coaster.